How about a mysterious object that used to orbit between Mars and Jupiter? At one point in the early days of the solar system, it was destroyed by some catastrophic event. This space body is called Phaeton, and this planet is totally hypothetical. But some people believe that the debris the planet left behind could have formed the asteroid belt. If you like this kind of content, please give it a non-hypothetical like and subscribe. Your support is very important to us. Thank you. Now, at the start of the 19th century, people hadn't discovered the asteroid belt yet. But in 1801, one astronomer spotted the largest asteroid in our solar system, Ceres. At that time, it was believed that a planet was orbiting between Mars and Jupiter, and Ceres seemed to be a suitable candidate. But the next year, another astronomer discovered one more space object with a similar orbit. It was an asteroid that was later named Pallas. These discoveries made scientists conclude that these two objects could have been fragments of the very planet that had once been dwelling between Mars and Jupiter. The following discovery of two more asteroids, Juno and Vesta, seemed to confirm this idea. Only in the 20th century did the hypothetical planet get its name, Phaeton. It was actually a name taken from Greek mythology, meaning Shining One. The hero with this name was the son of the sun deity, Helios, who rode his solar chariot across the sky every day, giving humans the heat and light necessary for survival. One day, Helios allowed Phaeton to drive his chariot. But the sun didn't manage to control the horses. Everything went wrong, and Earth was about to burn down. That's why the main deity, Zeus, had to stop Phaeton with a thunderbolt. The idea of the asteroid belt being the sad result of the planet's destruction was called the disruption theory. And of course, there were several ideas explaining the planet's tragic fate. The most obvious one is that Phaeton was hit by a large space object. It could be another hypothetical body called Nemesis. Some people believe that it's our sun's companion star. According to this theory, the sun has a small companion star that has an extremely elliptical orbit. This orbit periodically brings it close to the Oort cloud, a large sphere of icy objects surrounding the sun. This, in turn, causes a lot of mess. It might be the reason why this hypothetical companion star was also nicknamed the Death Star. It might be a red or brown dwarf. But whatever it is at the furthest point of its orbit, it's believed to be about 1.5 light years away. The search for this star has been in progress for decades. But no one has succeeded in locating this elusive and potentially non-existent space object. Anyway, back to Phaeton. Another theory claims that the planet could have suffered some internal cataclysm which tore it apart. But these days, the disruption theory has fallen out of favor. It was replaced by the accretion theory. According to it, the asteroid belt formed in the process of gradual buildup of particles initially floating in a gaseous environment. With time, they came together to create larger masses. Gravity pulled on these particles, encouraging them to stay together and form planetesimals, tiny planet-like bodies that later form real planets. Planetesimals kept colliding with one another, eventually developing into protoplanets. Such protoplanets grow until they form planetary bodies. As the mass of objects increases, the gravitational forces acting between particles become stronger too, continuing to build gas, dust, and ice within the nebular disk. It all has a snowball effect where the increase in mass results in more particles getting involved in the process. Eventually, there's no building material left, and large space objects float in the darkness of space. Now, many experts think that the asteroid belt is the remains of the protoplanetary disk which had once been orbiting the sun before the planets formed. Unfortunately, it never had a chance to coalesce into a planet because Jupiter's gravitational effect prevented it from happening. In any case, even though Phaeton's was a good story, it's not popular anymore. At the edge of our solar system, there's a cold and mysterious region known as the Oort Cloud. It's a hypothetical vast area of icy space objects surrounding the sun. It's believed to lie far, far away from our star, from 2,000 to 5,000 astronomical units. 
For comparison, Pluto's orbit carries the planet between 30 and 50 astronomical units from the Sun. And there, in this freezing emptiness, a rogue planet may be hiding right at the moment. At least, that's what new research has recently suggested. Rogue planets are called this way because they don't orbit around any star. They wander the galaxy alone, totally untethered. Without stars, they don't have days or nights, only eternal darkness. Rogue planets are usually kicked out of their planetary systems, doomed to a solitary existence of circling the center of the galaxy on their own. Of the thousands of planets scientists have detected outside of our solar system, only a dozen or so are starless and cruising on their own. At the same time, there might be billions or even trillions of rogue planets wandering around our galaxy. If these estimations are true, it might mean that the Milky Way contains more free-floating planets than stars. Anyway, in 1907, one astronomer started a search for Planet X. It's a hypothetical giant planet moving around the Sun beyond the orbit of Neptune. The scientist was convinced that this planet existed because he had observed some irregularities in the orbits of Uranus and Neptune. His idea led to the discovery of Pluto in 1930. But the dwarf planet was too small to have any serious gravitational impact on the orbit of Neptune, let alone Uranus. These days, the Planet X theory is largely considered to be discredited, but it hasn't stopped astronomers from searching for planets in the far reaches of our solar system. And shockingly, a new study claims there might be one or even more out there, but much, much further away than predicted. An international team of scientists has recently simulated the unstable celestial mechanisms of the early solar system. They've discovered that there's a possibility that a few planet-sized bodies might have come to rest in the Oort cloud. You see, about 4.5 billion years ago, when the solar system was just forming, it was a hectic and unsettled place. Gravity sent debris from the cooling protoplanetary dust cloud hurtling around like cosmic tennis balls. From time to time, large chunks of this debris even planet-sized ones were sent flying far enough to escape the sun's gravity altogether. Such pieces of debris turned into rogue planets. Researchers have seen such space wanderers in distant exoplanetary systems. But according to them, there's a 0.5% chance that one or more of those wayward planets formed in the solar system and ended up in the Oort cloud after drifting away from the sun. At the same time, it's slightly more likely that a rogue, Neptune-like planet was snagged by the Sun's gravity from another planetary system. And then, this planet came to rest somewhere in the Oort cloud. The chances that this scenario is true reach 7%. If this turns out to be the case, then a space body similar to Planet X might indeed be hiding out there, on the outskirts of our solar system. The only problem is that it would still be too far away to have any impact on Neptune's orbit. In any case, most researchers are convinced that the Oort cloud is made up of a collection of way smaller icy objects. But given the distance to the Oort cloud and its enormous size, we may never really figure out what is lurking out there. For thousands of years, People knew only about the planets Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, which they could see using simple telescopes, or even by the naked eye, if conditions were good. But in the late 18th century, a famous astronomer named Sir William Herschel discovered a new planet that was icy blue in color. At first, people thought it was a star, but later they realized it was a planet. Today, we know it as Uranus, a planet that's more than 19 times farther away from the Sun than Earth. It's so far away that it takes Uranus 84 years to complete one trip around the Sun. This astronomer also discovered many other interesting things in space, like double stars and nebulae. In the mid-1800s, 
scientists noticed something pulled Uranus and strangely tugged its orbit. They thought there must be another planet out there, and they used math to predict where it would be. Finally, in 1846, they found Neptune using a telescope. It was too faint to see with the naked eye because it was too far away from the sun. It was all so exciting. Who knows how many other planets could be there lurking in the darkness of our solar system. Back in the mid-1800s, astronomers noticed something unusual was happening in the sky. A small rocky planet named Mercury was behaving strangely. It didn't follow the predictable orbit that was expected of it. One of the astronomers was a brilliant French scientist named Urbain Le Verrier. He came up with a theory that there could be another planet in our solar system no one had yet discovered. It would be located somewhere between Mercury and the Sun. This hypothetical planet, which he named Vulcan after the Roman god of fire, would have an incredibly hot surface. And it could be a potential explanation for Mercury's strange behavior. He never surely claimed Vulcan was really the one thing disturbing the orbit of Mercury. But, excited by the possibility of discovering a new planet, astronomers all over the world took the idea of Vulcan. For a planet that didn't exist, people committed to developing ideas and getting information about it. Some scientists didn't think it was likely that they had missed another planet as big as Mercury. It would have been hard not to see it by then. But there was a tiny chance of a smaller planet existing inside Mercury's orbit that was too close to the Sun, so no one could see it. One theory said it was about 13 million miles away from the Sun. Mercury is the planet with the most eccentric orbit in our solar system, but the closest point it gets to the Sun is about 28.5 million miles. This means Vulcan would be under half of that distance. The theory moved on, saying that if Vulcan existed, it would orbit the Sun every 19 days and 18 hours and its path would be tilted about 12 degrees relative to the path of other planets in our solar system. Vulcan's position at its furthest point from the Sun would still be too close to the Sun to be seen with the naked eye, even during twilight. The only chance of seeing Vulcan would be during a solar eclipse or when it passed in front of the Sun, which, as the theory said, would be two to four times a year. They had a theory that this mysterious planet was so close to the Sun that it could only be seen during a total solar eclipse when the Moon blocked out the Sun's blinding glare. So, every time there was an eclipse, scientists would peer at the Sun, hoping to catch a glimpse of Vulcan. They were trying really hard, but no matter what, they couldn't find this mysterious planet. Some astronomers claimed to have spotted it during eclipses, but no one could ever confirm or find evidence for that. The theory of Vulcan was left waiting for some better times. Einstein had a different idea. You know about his theory of general relativity, right? That's where he claimed gravity wasn't some sort of natural force, but a result of space-time curved because of the presence of giant space objects, like planets and stars. Planets circle around the Sun in their usual orbit because space-time is curved. That means the planets are kind of falling towards the central star of our solar system. And Einstein tried to explain Mercury's unusual orbit using his own theory of relativity. Unlike the other planets in our solar system, Mercury's orbit wasn't that circular. Instead, it seemed to wobble slightly, as if there was an invisible force pulling it away. Einstein said this could be happening because the massive gravity of our Sun was actually curving the fabric of space-time around it. He claimed it's possible this changed Mercury's orbit a little bit. It took the scientific community a while to test this theory, but it eventually seemed like the most plausible explanation. Even though Einstein's theory gave us a more elegant explanation for Mercury's strange orbit, some scientists were still holding out hope for Vulcan. It was especially hard to let go of the idea of Vulcan because Mercury is also the planet that's really hard to see from where we're standing. But later, more and more scientists started accepting Einstein's theory above their imagination. And they would observe a total solar eclipse specifically to test Einstein's theory of relativity, not because of Vulcan. 
And Vulcan is not the only hypothetical planet everyone was talking about. In the newer age, some believe there could be a mysterious planet lurking in the outer part of our solar system. But this one is more likely to exist. No one has seen it directly yet, but computer simulations show this so-called Planet 9, or Planet X, is probably somewhere there beyond Neptune. Neptune and Planet X could be similar in size. Planet X could be 10 times more massive than Earth and circles around our Sun in an elongated shape, which is on average 20 times farther from the Sun than Neptune. A year there may last between 10,000 to 20,000 Earth years. By comparison, a year on Neptune lasts 165 Earth years. Something this big moving out there beyond Neptune could explain the unusual orbits of smaller objects in the Kuiper Belt. The Kuiper Belt is the area of our solar system beyond Neptune and where it orbits. And there are most likely many asteroids, comets, and some other smaller bodies there, mostly made of ice. There was another hypothetical planet called Nibiru. Remember those rumors that the world could end back in 2012? One of the popular scenarios was Nibiru, which some claimed would hit our home planet at the end of the year. Of course, nothing happened. We're still here, all set and good, but the idea of Nibiru seemed interesting. Stories started in the 1970s when a man named Zachariah Sitchin mentioned Nibiru in his book, The Twelfth Planet, claiming it orbits the sun every 3,600 years. But there's no chance a planet with such an eccentric orbit wouldn't disrupt other planets in our solar system with its gravity. And if it was really coming that close to Earth in 2012, we were supposed to be able to see it with the naked eye. Some simple calculations showed Nibiru would have been nearly as bright as Mars at its dimmest and brighter than the faintest stars you see from a city. Oh well, maybe we'll have more luck in the next 3,500 and something years. In 2011, a comet named Elenin appeared that many people thought could be Nibiru. But when you're looking at comets and planets through a telescope, you see they appear differently. A comet has a coma, which is a gas atmosphere, together with a tail, something a planet doesn't have. Plus, this comet didn't slam into the Earth. It came too close to our Sun and fell apart. The leftover pieces will continue moving on their way to the outer solar system for the next 12,000 years. Dark, mysterious, cold space. Comets, asteroids, planets, stars, and something that's lurking over there, far beyond Pluto. Yup, this could be the ninth planet of our solar system, the one people have been wondering about for centuries. IRAs, which stands for the Infrared Astronomical Satellite, collected interesting data back in 1983. It could be proof that Planet 9 is hiding there. No one knows if it really exists, but this discovery helped to build a model to understand this potential planet better. And in 2016, scientists found out that some small space objects in the Kuiper Belt were orbiting a bit oddly. The Kuiper Belt is the outer area of our solar system. It's a ring in the shape of a donut, filled with leftovers from the times when our solar system was forming. You can find this donut beyond Neptune. The objects in that region of space have weird orbits, almost as if a big body with strong gravity is pushing them away. Knock knock, Planet 9 again! The theory says it might be 5 to 10 times the mass of our own planet, and up to 20 times further away than Neptune. The astronomical unit equals the distance between our planet and the Sun. Pluto is approximately 40 astronomical units from the Sun. But Planet 9, if it exists, is 400 to 800 astronomical units away. It would take 10,000 to 20,000 Earth years for this mysterious planet to make a single circle around the Sun. This makes it harder for us to catch this space body. There's a theory Planet 9 may have formed between the orbits of Jupiter and Neptune, similar to the rest of the gas giants in our solar system. The gravitational force of one of the two huge planets probably kicked it out of its orbit. Oh no! Then Planet 9 could get ejected further away from the eight planets we know about. It ended up as some sort of icy waste, quite small at the beginning. But as time went by, 
Planet 9 has cleared its orbit of frozen pieces of rock and dust and finally formed into a real planet. Another theory says that this could be a planet another star lost on its way while it was passing near our solar system. In any case, Planet 9 probably doesn't reflect that much sunlight since it's so far away. And astronomers aren't sure where exactly they should look for it. Space is dark, mysterious, endless, obviously. But if we do find Planet 9, it will be the first solid proof there are more planets in our solar system than we thought. Moving on to an interesting exoplanet, located only 90 light years away from us. An exoplanet is generally a planet located outside our solar system. This one has an atmosphere with water clouds. One year there lasts 24 Earth days, and the planet travels around a red dwarf star, which is way dimmer and smaller than our sun. That's why, even though the planet is 8 times closer to its star than we are to our sun, the temperature there is similar to that on our planet. This exoplanet has a size similar to Neptune. It's also less dense, which means it's mostly made of gas, unlike Earth, which is made of rock. The average temperatures there is 140 degrees, which makes it one of the coolest small exoplanets we've ever discovered. And the cooler the exoplanet is, the bigger the chance we'll find clouds in its atmosphere. Researchers have discovered more than 4,000 exoplanets, but all of them have been found within the Milky Way, at least until now. For the first time, astronomers may have spotted a planet outside our galaxy. They called it M51 ULS 1. Hmm. The planet is located in the Whirlpool Galaxy, a distant spiral galaxy 28 million light years away from us. There was once a huge but pretty young star that got stuck in a gravitational dance with something that could be a dense neutron star, the collapsed core of a giant star, or a black hole. The star's dance partner had incredibly strong gravity. It was feeding on the star, greedily ripping away its plasma. Then something unusual happened. An unknown, maybe even Saturn-sized object passed by and blocked this confrontation from our solar system. Now no one can see what is going on. But this could potentially be the farthest planet we've ever discovered. There's a newly discovered planet outside our solar system. As large as Jupiter, it orbits two stars. And, as we can observe it from our planet, it crosses in front of them both. The full circle around these two stars, which means one year, takes approximately 200 Earth days. On the day of the discovery of the previous planet, scientists also found it had an unusual companion. It's an extra-hot Jupiter with an ultra-tight orbit around its star. The year there lasts only 1.9 Earth days. This planet has a weirdly shaped orbit. Also, it travels in the opposite direction from the rotation of its star. If you could travel 57 light years away from our planet, you'd see something pink lurking in the darkness. As you get closer, it becomes bigger and more fascinating. Yup, it's a magenta-colored planet. A few billion miles away from its sun, this guy is one of the youngest planets scientists have discovered. It's only 100 to 200 million years old. It's made of pink gas, similar to our Jupiter. So if you could fly closer to its surface, this gas would envelop you like a thick fog. You're coming closer and going deeper, and the gas is becoming darker, getting a reddish shade. And look at the planet's core. It's super hot. Because of its high temperature of 460 degrees Fahrenheit, this planet is like an oven. The heat is the reason the planet glows so brightly. You'll also notice the sky is hazy pink, with clouds made of droplets of frozen water, similar to ours. There's another exoplanet half as massive as Earth, which is one of the smallest planets we've ever found outside our solar system. It has a diameter of 5,600 miles. For comparison, Earth's diameter is 7,900 miles. The planet in question is mostly made of iron, similar to Mercury. Mercury has a massive iron core and a very thin crust, which makes it an oddball in our solar system. At its early stages, it collided with some space body at least once. That collision pulled its outer layers away, which is why only the firm iron core remained. Maybe this exoplanet participated in a huge space crash too. That's what probably took away the planet's mantle and left mostly its iron core. Or maybe this is just a remnant of a gaseous planet that used to be the size of Neptune. The atmosphere of the planet could be blown away by, let's say, a huge amount of radiation coming from the star. This planet is only 31 light-years away from us, and the day there is less than 8 Earth hours long. 
The planet is only a little bit bigger than Mars. People aren't likely to ever settle in that place because of its extreme temperatures that go up to 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. There might even be molten lava on the side of the planet that faces its star. Such temperatures are high enough to evaporate any atmosphere, so this planet might have had one in the past. Generally, gas giants like Jupiter can't support life because they have extreme weather conditions, temperature, and pressure. And there are no building blocks that might create life. But smaller terrestrial planets, such as, I don't know, Earth, have more key ingredients like oxygen and liquid water. Plus, they have more temperate weather and other conditions. And still, not all of such planets support life, of course. It's not easy to find a planet with similar conditions as the ones we have on Earth, or at least the conditions that would allow life to develop there. But meet Kepler-22b, one of our most promising findings. It's 600 light-years away from us, twice bigger than our planet, and with temperatures of about 72 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a so-called super-Earth. It's a category of planets unlike any we have in the solar system. They're more massive than Earth, but still lighter than ice giants such as Uranus or Neptune. Super-Earths can consist of rock, gas, or a mixture of these two. Kepler-22b is within the habitable zone of its parent star, which is less bright than our sun. The planet probably has a rocky core. It may have an ocean, but it doesn't host any life. At least, we don't know about it yet.